Hi, this video is on how to configure a checkpoint VSX gateway with your management server. So looking at the network diagram, which I have covered in the VSX overview video, uh, we've got the management side, we've got the external side connecting to the um, physical router from the switch, and we've got the VLAN trunk connecting to each particular network on their specified VLANs. So this is the topology we'll be following in the video when we are configuring the VSX gateway. Also the IP addressing scheme, it will all be on one subnet on the external side because it's a switch. If it was a router then we may need to subnet them off, but we're fine on that as well. Um, and that's pretty much it, so we can start the uh, VSX uh, gateway configuration. So the first thing to do is right click the checkpoint object and go to VSX and go to VSX gateway. If it was a cluster then you'd configure it as a cluster if you've got two VSX gateway appliances. Okay, it says the current database policies need to be saved before the new VSX configuration can be applied. Do you want to save and apply the new configuration? Let's go for yes on here. And the first thing we do in the VSX gateway wizard is give it a name, an IP address and a version. So give it a name of CP VSX. The IP address for my gateway is 10.10.20.10 .10 and the version will leave us R77 but here's the supported versions anyway. Okay so let's click next and then we come to the creation templates and uh, the creation templates page lets you provision a default topology and the routing definition for virtual systems. It's basically used so that virtual systems are consistent and makes the process quick of creating them and you can also still uh, override the creation template when you create or change a virtual system however so you don't need to uh, worry about it too much but um, let's go through each option here so the shared interface is uh, which where virtual systems share one external interface but have separate internal interfaces this one here then there's the separate interfaces where virtual systems use their own separate internal and external interfaces and finally there's the custom configuration where you can define the virtual systems virtual routers virtual switches and interface configurations yourself and I always go for the custom one for the flexibility and click next so the next page is the activation key so specify the uh, SIC activation key here which will initialize the secure internal communication trust between the VSX gateway and the management server so basically they trust each other and are able to communicate so let's give it a key and I've already done this on the gateway side of give it a key so if I initialize it should uh, build a SIG trust now fail to connect to the gateway um, let's try that one more time so it's failed again let's uh, go back check the IP address 10.10.20.10 .10 .10. that's the correct IP address and it looks like the gateway is having a communication problem um, I may need to reboot the server possibly and it's locked as well by the browser 10.10.20.10 so I'll just give this gateway a reboot and I'll start the video again so I've rebooted the gateway and we can try SIC again so if we click on initialize and it's failed to connect to the security gateway again so let's check the SIC status which I should have really done anyway um, okay try to reset SIC on the peer and establish the trust so what we can do is reset SIC on here. So if we log in and if we specify CP config, and let's choose option five. Confirm. We like to reinitialize a communication. Yep. Enter the activation key. Okay, that's done and now 9 to exit from here and we'll let it restart its services and then we'll try again. It should be back with us within a few seconds hopefully.
So it's starting the product by the looks of it. Okay, let's try it now. And initialize. And that's trust established. Check six status, so six status for CPV6 uh, communication, so that's absolutely spot on. Let's click next. So the next part is the uh, interfaces. So from here you can define which interfaces will be uh, VLAN trunk interfaces. So usually you would do this for the internal interface connecting to the physical uh, VLAN aware switch. So each separate network reaches a uh, virtual system based on the defined VLANs like we have in the uh, diagram network diagram just here so let's um, specify one of the interface ports to be VLAN trunk so if we go for Ethernet 1 and that will be VLAN trunk and let's click next here okay so this page is on setting up a virtual device within the VSX gateway because I chose the custom configuration option we're able to define a virtual device with an interface shared with the VSX gateway you don't have to create a virtual device you can just click next to continue but we'll create a virtual switch as we have in the network diagram while we are here so if we click on create a virtual network device and the options you have is virtual switch and virtual router if you click on virtual router you can see you've got to fill out the IP addressing information as well um, we're just going to create a virtual switch and select the shared interface so the shared interface this time will be Ethernet 2 and click next okay so that's uh, done and the next page this these options here are to uh, define policy rules for the VSX gateway itself so these are basically management access policy rules to so the gateway itself so you can change these or leave them as they are and the uh, security policy consists of the predefined rules here which is SNMP, SSH, uh, ping and HTTPS and there's a default block of anything else here um, because this policy applies only to traffic destined to the VSX gateway traffic destined for virtual systems and other virtual devices uh, external networks and internal networks are not affected so you can select to pass traffic on the selected services by these tick boxes or you can clear the option to block traffic on the particular service and by default all services are blocked as you can see here but we can just click them like that HTTPS, SSH, even pings useful and we'll just leave SNMP off um, so for source of traffic the default is any but you can specify the uh, source you're coming from and you can uh, create an object from here new source object uh, so you're only allowing the IP addresses uh, that, that you want to allow and we can click next to continue from here so you've allowed services with source set to any it's recommended to use a specific source rather than any uh, are you sure you want to continue since this is a demo we'll click yes and click finish and now it's going away and installing the um, VSX gateway and configuring it so we'll pause the video once this alright so that's being completed we've got a VSX gateway now configured so if we click close here and we should be able to see it in the network object so here it is CP VSX gateway so the next thing we need to do is create a new virtual system so also if we break that down um, we can see the virtual switch we created the virtual device so we'll have a look at this shortly so if we right click checkpoint go to VSX and create a VSX virtual system so this is an actual virtual system which is a, a gateway a virtual gateway virtual firewall so checkpoint call it virtual system so let's click that and we come to the uh, wizard so the first thing to do is provide a name so let's call it virtual system and then you specify which um, 
VSX Gateway this virtual system is hosted on so if we click there and we've only got one VSX Gateway so it's only got the one option here and click that so it selected that and the, the next uh, portion is the bridge mode option uh, you'd only select bridge mode if you are creating a virtual system in bridge mode which we are not so we'll leave that unticked uh, and advanced override creation templates so there here's the option to override it so select override creation template to override the creation template that was used for the initial uh, configuration of the VSX gateway so we'll leave that unticked as well you click next so now in this portion we do the configure the interfaces and the routing from here so depending on the creation template used you will get different criteria for this area we use the custom configuration template so we need to manually define the network interfaces here just to note a regular interface would be using a physical interface directly attached to a physical switch or router then there's VLAN interfaces uh, which would be uh, via a regular interface but with VLAN tagging enabled and virtual interfaces which lead to virtual routers or switches and uh, we need two interfaces one will be a warp interface a virtual interface connecting to our virtual switch on the external side which is here so the, the connecting to the external switch is virtual system we're just doing one virtual system and the other will be a VLAN interface connecting directly to the physical link on the internal side so here so this trunk so we'll create both of these uh, interfaces now so if we go back to the dashboard the wizard and uh, let's create our internal interface and specify a VLAN tag so let's add and there's two options one's regular one's leads to virtual switch there's also leads to virtual router if we add a virtual router uh, configured but we haven't so we've only got the leads to virtual switch here so because we're uh, configuring it as a regular interface we we'll click the regular option and we'll choose the interface from here Ethernet 1 and we'll give it a VLAN of 100 for example and we can give it an IP address so let's just go for something in the 172 range let's keep it as the RFC 1918 range and go for 24 subnet mask okay and then you've got you can select uh, propagate route to adjacent virtual devices which uh, advertises the route to neighboring virtual devices and enables connectivity between them we'll just leave it unticked for now and here's the IP version uh, 6 address if you're using IP version 6 click OK here we've created that interface there so now let's create a warp link by clicking add and clicking the leads to virtual switch so this is on the external side here so this VF system creating this link here so where does it lead to we've only got one uh, virtual switch and it's here so click this option give it an IP address and give it a subnet mask again uh, you've got your standard settings here uh, because it's a switch uh, some of these are grayed out uh, such as the propagate route to adjacent virtual devices and click OK here so we've created that interface as well and then you've got your um, routes so you can add your routes here as well so if you click add you can add the destination network netmask IP address netmask and then you could specify uh, the next hop gateway here or you can just choose a virtual router as the next hop gateway we haven't got a virtual router configured so there's nothing in there so just cancel that and click next and click finish and there you go it's uh, configuring our first virtual system so I'll pause the video since this may take a short while and I'll start the video straight after it.
Okay, so it's finished uh, configuring our new uh, virtual system. So we can click close here. We could optionally view a report from here if we click that. Um, so click close, and now here we can see within our checkpoint uh, network objects, we've created a VSX gateway. Within the VSX gateway, we created a virtual switch that was done as part of the gateway wizard, the VSX gateway wizard and we have just created our first virtual system so um, there you have it um, also what you can do is you can double click these just to check the properties and conf further configure them from here as well uh, the main bits to take away from the gateways you can uh, see the creation templates from here and you can also have a look at the physical interfaces from here and also uh, optionally uh, enable VLAN trunking or disable them from here if if required so let's cancel that uh, we can have a look at a virtual system from here uh, you can see the general properties uh, the IP address the virtual system name we called it virtual system what VSX gateway appliance it applies to the blades enabled on the virtual system here uh, the topology information in here, so the interfaces and the routes uh, and etc. So you could uh, change all this from here. And we've got the virtual switch as well, which uh, doesn't have as much information. Um, if we go to topology and double click these, you can edit these. And of course, it doesn't have any IP addressing on here because it's a uh, switch. Okay, this uh, interface was created automatically, it cannot be edited or removed, that's fine. Well, if we go to, what we can do is, if we go to, so if we um, go near the bottom, there's some VSX gateways in here. If we break this down, here's a, a virtual router, so VR. If we have a look at this, um, with virtual routers, the firewall only protects the router itself. So it's got a firewall built in, but it only protects the router itself. It's got some IPS, but that's pretty much it, monitoring as well, uh, for as far as uh, software blades go anyway. And you can look at the topology as well, which uh, you can configure interfaces and routes just like the virtual systems from here as well. The one bit I've missed out and um, is the a command line so we can have a look at the command line as well um, which we need putty for so I've got it on my desktop if we log in with putty you can actually directly log into the VSX gateway via SSH and you can run um, commands from there as well so let's log in let's wait for this to come back it's sometimes a little bit slow okay so let's specify the password and I'm logged in so you can run various um, commands from here such as um, FW VSX stat which gives you some stats on the VSX gateway itself so it's telling you virtual systems how many active how many configured virtual router switches the total connections uh, number of virtual systems allowed by license 25 you can actually actually have a look at the license information so it's very similar to just a standard gateway really a lot of these commands and it gives you some licensing information here checkpoint this is trial license I've got um can do FW get FS to look at the interfaces. So it's just given us the local host, Ethernet Zero, which is our management interface. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we've had a look at uh how to configure the uh, VSX gateway uh to install a virtual switch as well as a virtual system and the command line for VSX. Thank you for watching.